All right, everyone, this is Tim with Online Thing Blue, bringing you the best in New York Giant Sports Talk and Entertainment. It's early in the morning. We're doing a video. Two cups of coffee in. Why? Why not? Got a lot to do. Got a lot to talk about. A little housekeeping chore here. Um, I got a couple emails the other day saying that you promised you were doing a live stream when you hit the 6,000 subscribers. You promised you were doing a live stream when you hit 1,000 Twitter followers. And we've done both, and I haven't done a live stream yet. All right, so I got to do a live stream. Uh, I don't know when. It, it, it'll probably pop up like a day. I'll, I'll announce it the day before it happens. Probably be in the next couple of weeks. But we'll do a live stream. Uh, we're also going to be doing the ticket giveaway contest where you can attend a Giants-Jets preseason game, the first time MetLife has really been open to fans. And we have Coaches Clubs tickets, so you get to walk on the field, all that fun stuff. We'll have more details in reference to that as well. Also, Eli Manning, of course, has come back into fold for the New York Giants. He signed a contract, and he is going to be working for fan experiences and all that fun stuff. Not really news. We all we all kind of we all knew Eli was going to find a role with the Giants. One of the greatest quarterbacks in Giants history, outside of Phil Simms and Chuck and Charlie Conley. You knew he was going to be a quarter. You knew he was going to be with the team. Not really. Not really news there. Um, I don't think there was anything else like giant pressing that we saw. Saquon Barkley was playing golf. People need to relax. It's um, he's just playing golf. There, there's a different motion and movement for golf than it's. I'm not even going to get into rehabilitation because unless you, unless you have gone through an ACL rehabilitation, and I've gone through two. Y- you know, there's things you can do, and people are like, oh, look at him, he's doing this. And it's like, no, it has it has nothing to do with cutting motions. It has nothing to do with movement. It has nothing to do with flexibility. It has nothing to do with the strength of the knee. I think I played golf seven months or six months after my first ACL. Not, not. I mean, it's not, not a, not a lot of news on on that front. On that front, well, there's not a lot of giant news just in general. But I kind of wanted to talk about some hidden talents or some hidden gems, or, or, or not even gems, but just some potentially some some surprise contributors that could really contribute to the Giants in 2021. These are guys that are probably some are maybe you are familiar with, and some of you probably you know don't have a lot of familiarity with. But there are a couple of guys that I was thinking about. Oh, I did want to mention one thing: Daniel Jones. You can be a Daniel Jones fan, but don't be a Daniel Jones fanatic. When you post shit like, oh, he's going to be the MVP of the league, he's throwing for 50 touchdowns, he's doing this, he's going to do this, and then point out things like, well, he ran so fast at 80 yards, he was 20 miles an hour. Okay. You know what? Be a fan, not a fanatic. A fanatic questions nothing about the team, the organization, or the players. They just think everything is fine. A fan is still supports his teams, but they have, or she, they have the mindset to question things and not follow blindly. So be a fan, not a fanatic. So let's talk about some Giants who can make some surprise contributions to the team. One of them is going to be Madre Harper. Madre, of course, we took over from the Las Vegas Raiders, the cornerback. Really never got a chance, an opportunity to get on the field. He played sparingly on special teams. He was the big Joe Judge steal from the Raiders. He went and stole them. Yeah, and he barely played. And it's difficult to come in midseason and try to pick up a new system, and I understand that, and that's why I didn't get on Madre's case. But he's kind of shown something to me this year, and he didn't really show it to me on the field. He he was one of the few corners to show up for minicamp. He, he took advantage of the opportunity that these other guys didn't show up to the camp. And it kind of gave, in my mind, it kind of gave him a boost in the eyes of the organization. He's also evidently came in in fantastic shape. He actually, they're saying that he bulked up. Like I said, I did not see him in person, but they're saying that he bulked up, that he looks good. You know, he's 6'1", 196 pounds. He's out of Southern Illinois. Only 23 years old. I can't tell you, you can't, you don't know 100% if he's a, if he's more of a cover guy, if he's more a zone guy, because you never really seen him play. But the, the the scuttlebutt at a mini camp was he looked good, and, and that's what you want. You want you want a guy to come in and look good. And I, and I like I said, I love the fact that he decided to come in to mini camp. 
he decided to come into the voluntary mini camp. That 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 you know that shows a a modicum of dedication in my mind. That he he's taking his NFL career seriously. I'm not saying a lot of players don't, but a lot of players do. Some players, not a lot. Some players take some players take. Uh, I don't want to say advantage, but they take for granted that they're in the NFL. Some seventh round picks make the roster, and, and they kind of don't work as hard. I've seen that firsthand. But Mondre seems to have the right mindset. He has the right mentality. He's big. He's a big. He, you know, he's he's a good sized corner. I could see him filling up into the nickel package. There is a lot of competition on this roster for for the quarterback position, cornerback position. But I think we're going to see some good things about Mr. Harper. And he could replace Isaac Yadam. <laughs> I'm just kidding, guys. Isaac's not going anywhere. Isaac is probably, you know what's scary? Isaac is probably not going anywhere. And I, and I find, and I'm not even going to get into that, but he might not be going anywhere. Another player that I was thinking about is a guy that's not really too much of a surprise. It's Carter Coughlin. I've talked about Carter before. He had a coming out party in the Seattle game. And I understand it is one game. And I'm not going to be a fanatic. Going to be a fan. He had three good games, one excellent game towards the end of the season. So that's what you need to look at. But... They're keeping him more into the linebacker position. At least they did that in minicamp. They they had him involved. They had him more in that position. They're not. They're not. They didn't put him. At, they they didn't have him both at the defensive end and the linebacker position. They played him. He played almost. I would say the majority of the snaps. They said in the linebacker position. And I, and I think he showed, which is interesting. In that Seattle game. He showed his speed. And his ability to maintain the edge, because like I said, if it was not for him, we would not have been able to contain Russell Wilson. And I think people need to understand and look at that. Will he be a pass rushing rushing force? I can't say he will and I can't say he won't. But I can tell you this. He's got nice sideline to sideline speed. He has good vision. And he, and in the small sample that we had of him, he didn't get lost in the sauce a lot towards the end of the season. He was able to slide off the blockers and put himself in a position to make the tackles. He reminded me of towards the end. He reminded me of Ryan Conley, what Ryan Conley was in that first four games of his rookie season. Now, most people forget that uh, when Conley came over from Wisconsin, he ran the same system that James Betcher did with the Giants. So he had familiarity with the system immediately. So, so a lot of people, you know, forget forget that small little nuance and detail. Why do I know that? Because I'm a fan, not a fanatic. That's how I that's how I know that. But I could be very I could, could be very impressed with that. Another guy that could be a very surprise contributor, I'm not going to say he's a surprise because he is a veteran, is Reggie Ragland. Reggie at 6'2", 252 pounds, 27 years old, out of Alabama. He is never going to be the player that he was that second year with Kansas City. He's always going to be a run stopper. He will be a liability in pass coverage. But you know what? As a middle, as a middle linebacker, Alongside Blake Martinez on, on obvious running downs, I think they can more than man the interior on the second level. And I think that he has that ability. And like I said, he is on a very, very team-friendly contract. It's not like we're paying him exponentially to come in. Oh, that's some music jumping right in here. I don't even know why that jumped in right there. I know why, because I'm lazy and I didn't hit the button. But he could make a difference for this team on obvious running downs. Um, uh, He will be a liability in pass coverage at times. Because that's just the type of player he is. But if you're on first and second down and it's an obvious running down, you pair him with Blake Martinez, you can really man that second level. The last player that I think is going to make an impact is going to be my old buddy Matt from Connecticut. 6'7", 318 pounds. Of course, Matt's out of Connecticut. People always go to me, why do you call Matt from Connecticut? You want to know why? Because I like to have fun. If we don't have fun, go fucking watch something else. Sorry. Fired up today. 
reading some of the e- is there reading some of the comments and the stupidity that got me fired up. Matt evidently has been lifting weights. He's been hanging and banging. I've said from the moment we drafted Matt that Matt was going to be a project player. He was not going to be a starter maybe till year three. And I think he proved that in in his limited role. People are like, well, he played so wonderfully. He played like 32% of the snaps. They put him in positions to succeed, and there was at times when they put him in positions out of need he did not come through, which is not surprising for a guy that does not have the football pedigree, especially coming from Connecticut, and he hasn't been playing that long. That Eagle game was a good reminder. I, I, I mentioned the play where both him and Andrew Thomas whiffed and almost got Daniel Jones sandwiched. But you could see potential in the short term with Matt. I think he is going to be, especially early, he's going to be a much better run blocker than he is going to be a pass protector because pass protecting is is more of an art and is a little bit more difficult than pushing forward. But if he continues to maturate and grow, he is gonna he's gonna play. And honestly, we're gonna need him to play. Our line right now is it, it like I said, the line reminds me of back when Jerry Reese neglected the linebackers and the wide receivers. And we saw what happened those couple t- those two years. And I'm not saying that Dave Gellman's neglected the line. I think they're just happy with the talent they have. But I would like to have seen a, be- a veteran presence come in. But I think Matt can make another leap from where he was his rookie season. I don't think he's going to be a full-time starter yet. I don't think that's going to be till year three. But I do think he will have the ability to be a spot starter and fill in as a situational pass protector and run, you know, runs you know, run blocker. And I think, you know, like I said, but those are the guys that I was just thinking off the top of my head. And I got them. This is Tevin Online Big Blue, bringing you the best in New York Giants sports talk and entertainment. And as always, if you could like, if you subscribe, if you could play, you know what I mean? That'd be awesome.